So one of the new tools available in uh, Mark Edit 6 is a set of tools that are being categorized under something called Mark Next. This is a research tool bench. Uh, you'll see it from the main window. If you click on it, you'll see there are three tools. One is Bib Frame Testbed, one is JSON Object View, and one is Linked Identifiers. I'm going to talk specifically about the Linked Identifiers tool. Uh, the Linked Identifiers tool is a, is a tool that you can actually use now um, with your Mark data. Um, although I'm not quite sure, in fact I'm, I'm positive there aren't any uh, uh, library uh, systems that can make use of the information that gets created here. Um, because the idea behind it is, um, if we look at a regular MARC record, and I'll go ahead and I'll pull one up really quickly. I downloaded a test record here, um, and if we look at this record, uh, folks who are, who are catalogers, this, this record's going to look... Um, completely uh, uh, normal. Go ahead and open this up real quick. You'll see that it's got a uh, normal set uh, in terms of access points. We have a 100, a 650, and 7xx, a 700. Um, with the implementation of uh, RDA, one of the things I was disappointed in was um, the fact that uh, those kind of main entry headings didn't um, require uh, uh, URIs. Uh, part of the, the um, hope with doing things uh, and thinking about how we are going to take MARC records or, or even library data in general and, and turn it into um, more semantic data is how we take these, these plain strings, these plain string data and, and actually creating um, links to them, uh, creating using creating the URIs that link out to their, their um, authorized endpoints. So in MARC, um, there is actually a subfield on um, 1xx, the 6xx, and the 7xx called subfield 0. Subfield 0 has been dedicated for setting control numbers um, into records. Um, in MarkEdit, uh, in the linked data tool, in the linked uh, items tool, uh, MarkEdit is going to use that subfield um, as a way to embed URIs for these endpoints. That's why I say that right now, um, because this is a valid field, you can actually create these, you can actually put this information into your library catalog now. Uh, like I said, there isn't anybody that's going to use it at this point. Presumably at some point down the road, maybe somebody will. Alright, so let's go ahead and show you what this looks like. So that was that record. I'm going to go ahead and take that record again. I'm going to go ahead and grab that record. And I'm going to run it through the link tool. Alright, so we're going to run it through the link tool, and it's going to go ahead and get processed. So the link tool right now, let me explain what it's doing, is actually reading through the record, and it's looking for these um, access points. And when it finds them, it's going to go out and it's going to try and resolve their endpoints. Um, right now, the tool is primarily using id.loc.gov, the Library of Congress's um, name, and, and, uh, name and subjects uh, endpoint to get back um, the URIs that represent uh, these headings. Uh, the tool can use VAuth, it can use a couple of other um, endpoint, name resolution endpoints. Um, the main reason right now it's primarily using the Library of Congress's tools is it's the fastest. Um, VAuth works great, but it's, 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 a little, it's honestly just a little bit slow. I, I'm hoping that at some point we'll see something that's a non SRU implementation, or maybe there is one already that I'm unaware of, but a non-SRU implementation will be much more lightweight um, that'll allow for easier querying against the database. Um, same thing with other tools. What I, what you, I really want for, for something like this is you need a very lightweight tool. You can just make a request and get back a response. Um, the Library of Congress's tool actually um, has, has a couple of very lightweight ways of making queries and actually just getting back even headings, not data back, um, to be able to tell whether or not um, identifier exists. Um, so that's what it's doing right now. Right now it's resolving to um, id.lsc.gov. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like now. So uh, remember what that original record looked like. We just had plain strings. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open the new record, the linked record. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Here's the file that we just created. What you'll see is that in the 100 field, there's a subfield 0 that's been added. And it adds the 
um, the actual URI to the authorized name. The reason why this is important is if we follow this through right now, we'll get to an HTML page that represents um, this name. This is the authorized um, na name in the LC authority file. Um, if this is an HTML representation, but there's also, um, if you look down in the bottom here, alternative formats. There's RDF XML, there's in triples, there's JSON, there's MADS RDF, MADS in triples. There's a wide range of formats that are available, and the reason that's important is if my library system or whatever tool I was using to ingest this data was smart enough, instead of using those strings um, or just using that string data to say that, I, that um, I'm the author, uh, it could actually use that information to go out and get other information about me. Um, kind of the same way that Google and that Bing and the various search engines create those knowledge graphs. You, know, you type into the search engine a movie, you look over on, you're not going to get back just a set of search ter search results about the movie. You're also going to get a, a kind of this knowledge graph that tells you, um, you know, reviews about the movie, you know, other movies that are like it, you know, all kinds of entry information. It creates a very rich set of data around that object. In theory, that's kind of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to create the links to the endpoints so that systems that are smart enough can actually follow them and start to create those rich, um, that build those rich graphs of data about um, about people. So what does this mean for the bib frame stuff? Well, uh, just like in the mark records where having those URA endpoints potentially could be useful, for users that are trying to evaluate bib frame, um, who are taking mark records, translating them to bib frame concepts, um, sending uh, notes back to the Library of Congress, creating those link identifiers allows you to see um, a more uh, conceptual, more real world implementation of what the bib frame testbed might look like. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll take the original record. Um, this is the original record without the link data added to it. We'll go create create an RDF representation of that. So we'll go ahead and create a, an RDF representation of the, the one without the linking. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do one with the linking so that we can see what the difference is. Because there's, there's subtle differences, but they're important. So we're going to go ahead and select the other file here. This is the link data record that we created. And we're going to go ahead and output that record in um, a bib frame rep RDF rep representation. So we'll go ahead and process that record as well. All right, so our files have been processed. So we'll go ahead and open those two records here. All right, so this is the one without links. And this is the one that was the linked record. So let's look at the one without links. So if we go down and we look at our, um, into our annotations and then look at our people and subject headings, topic headings, you'll see here in the people, we have the about. So this is the, the domain um, where presumably the uh, main identifier uh, resolves to. Um, this is kind of how the, the X query stuff works. Um, you'll see that there's the label, there's an authorized access point, and that's pretty much it. You, there's a, a thing that's embedded that's uh, MADS authority, but there's nothing here that, that links it out to the larger web. Um, this is all still very much um, isolated to my local instance, to my local record. And why? And the reason why is because my mark record knew nothing about anything but that mark record. So let's go ahead and look at the linked data, uh, the linked representation. If we go back down and we look at um, the name, what we see is not only has the not the, the regular stuff is the same, but we'll see that the has authorities changed. So rather than creating a localized version of a, uh, a MADS authority record, the tools identified, the XQuery identifies because of the presence of a subfield zero and a URI, um, 
that it's been linked to it's it's been linked to an authority it's been linked to an endpoint and so it creates a bid frame has authority record uh, entry and provides the URI so again if I'm um, evaluating these records and I'm putting them into a system that understands um, what this has authority information means I no longer have to use my um, label I can actually follow um, this URI and go back and get the rich data um, about me, about the subject, about whatever, and start to create those links between this localized record and the larger context that it's being created in. Um, right now, like I said, we're using I'm using primarily id.loc.gov, but you could you could conceivably think about um, using something like VOF, which actually has links to um, a lot of other national library data, uh, uh, name authority records, so um, or even topical subjects. So, for example, digital libraries is going to match map presumably to something else in a different language, and so you know VOF maybe does that hard work for you, so you can see how those you don't have to have different match points. You match to the VOF record, you can go out and get that rich knowledge information um, that exists. It's already been collected that lives in that space. Um, so the, the link tool, hopefully, um, is a tool that's going to allow people to do two things. One is, uh, specifically for librarians and catalogers that are um, evaluating uh, bib frame right now, who are going through the bib frame and RDF testing uh, uh, training that's being offered by um, a variety of people um, so that they can take MARC records uh, translate them, evaluate them, and then send feedback to the Library of Congress and the MARC transition um, various uh, committees that are doing that work. Um, this will give them another way to create uh, data in their MARC records that gives them a little bit more of a flavor of kind of how those links start to work together. Today, um, I would like to think that the linked identifiers tool gives um, catalogers the option uh, to be able to start taking some of these linked data concepts and embedding them into their ILS systems now. Um, whether their system will make use of them? Doubtful. Whether they'll ever make use of them? Doubtful. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they'll be there. Um, and they will be available for when you get to a point where you can actually make use of them. Um, presumably, hopefully, it becomes something that's maybe a little bit more best practice. Um, you know, one of the things, like I said at the very beginning, that I was disappointed in was you know, when, when RDA came out was the, uh, the current kind of schema that we're using to replace AACR2 was that, you know, there was a lot of work done on RDA vocabularies and, and a lot of this kind of semantic web components, but in the end, when applied to MARC records, it was still just string data and it was still only marginally useful. Uh, by creating these linked identifiers and using some of the subfields that have been set aside in the MARC record um, to build those connections, um, you can start to create, hopefully, um, either within your local institution or maybe even in a larger scale, um, a um, large set of data that's already been linked together. and starts to um, you know, reduce what, what eventually a lot is being seen as kind of the hard work of taking that string data and linking it back to um, all the various identifiers and endpoints that live out um, in the library space. Uh, as I noted up front, uh, the linked identifiers tool, as of this recording right now, um, primarily uses the um, Library of Congress's uh, ID.gov. Um, that'll change. Uh, right now, the tool can use VOF. It can use a couple of other ones. Uh, for, perform for performance reasons, it doesn't make them available publicly. Um, but hopefully, um, those things will be resolved and um, we'll find ways to be able to make that information available so that um, when users are using the linked identifiers tool, they have a, a variety of um, services.